the Spirit speaks to our spirit. Help us, O oh Lord, to not only listen, but to truly hear. Amen. Amen. Today's scriptures, the scriptures that have been offered to us for consideration by the lectionary, um, offer us an interesting um, challenge. The today's texts are telling us the story, sharing with us the parable of the sower. Um, the context is Jesus and his disciples during his ministry uh, have come out of the area of Galilee and in Jesus' time in that historical context uh, the doing of farming was different from the way we're used to farming. Farming in our time where it used to, like when David and I did our garden we plow up the ground and get all the rocks out and we put some fertilizer on it and we get the ground nice and ready and then we like plant nice little rows of seeds of whatever and plant and we watch the enjoy the garden and the fruits and of the produce that comes forth. The commentators explained to us that in Jesus' day that sowing occurred prior to plowing and that the sower scattered the seeds and then the ground was turned over and then you wait and you anticipate the produce that might come up in the ground that was able to uh, adequately produce. So Jesus says, I have a story I want to tell you guys. Once there was a sower scattered seed. Some of the seed fell on the path. Other of the seed fell on the rocky soil. Some of the seed fell among the thorns. And then he says, and but some of the seed also fell on good soil. Right there, I want to stop and challenge that that's, that's how Jesus told the story he said good soil nowhere else in the descriptions of the other circumstances where the seeds fell is there any type of implied or presumed judgment I would venture to offer for our contemplation that all of the soil is good. That everywhere that the seed landed, where soil is, is good. It just so happens that that soil may have had a whole bunch of rocks in it. Or that soil may have been where people's feet have tramped it. And so that it's tight and hard and dense and has become a pathway. Uh, the seed among the thorns, the, the soil was good, but it just was inhabited by a lot of thorns. But that last category of ground, that soil, didn't have rocks. It didn't have. Thorns. It had somehow or other, circumstantially, whatever, however, it managed to then be in a condition that the seed could land and then be plowed and grow up and be abundant. When I read this text, I almost wrecked, I was, I'm glad David was driving because I almost wanted to go into a shout right then. I wanted to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it is reminiscent to me as I look at the soil of the Genesis story when God took the earth in 
formed it and breathed into it the breath of life and it became a living soul. You know, the Gen remember the Genesis creation, uh, the story. I, and God said, and it's good. So, so I go back and make the connection between that the soil is good. It just so happens that some of, we can't presume, my sisters and brothers, that we're the good soil. That we're the soil that's open and ready to receive the seed and bring forth abundantly, right? We can't, because some of us got some rocky things going on. Now. Amen. <laughs> some of us got some thorns all up in here. Huh? Some of us have, whatever the path and the circumstances of our lives, we've been trampled down. And so the fact that as Jesus pro proclaims and shares this parable, this wonderful story, Jesus is showing us an aspect of God, a characteristic, a virtue of God, that as, if, and as we understand the sower to be representative of God, I'm so glad that God is no respecter. God wants that seed to go everywhere. God just doesn't pick how, where to plant the seed in this, oh, this is good ground, this is ground that's already prepared, and I know that I can have an abundance. No, God chose to put that seed up into somebody messed up like me. And like you, and like each one of us, wherever we are in our path and our struggle, God says, Wait, this, this parable proclaims in, the, in its beginning, the sower went out and sowed the seeds. That is a proclamation, that is a, a, a declaration of God's grace. God's wondrous grace. It starts off with God's grace. The story starts in this wonderful place where God says, I'm going to give you this good news. This good news of God's reconciliation, God's forgiveness, God's unconditional love, God's availability, God's redemption. It's all abundant, available, and free. I'm going to toss it out there, and anybody that wants it, it's there for you. It's for everybody. The parable begins with the declaration of God's grace as one of God's attributes, but the parable ends with a declaration and a proclamation of God's abundance. So we are being offered, right, because it says that when the seed produces, it brings forth 100-fold, 60-fold, 35 The point is that it, it brings forth abundant fruit. And so let me say I'm going to be as e egotistical and, and, and naive and perceive myself to be good soil. Let me let me let me go then. Let me let me assume that I got all my rocks out, and I got all my thorns out, and I got all the bad things that would inhibit and be obstacles for my production. Let me just assume that I got my act together. Hmm? First of all, let me ask the question: Anybody in here that's already know they already got their act together? Okay, well, all right, good. I'm glad because I'm not alone. I know I just need to know that it isn't just me. Okay, but then let's let's presume the the, the the optimal circumstance, and then we do have we have gotten it together. I then have to ask, what kind of fruit do we bear? Mm. Ouch! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Even if I mean so, again, a proclamation of God's grace. God knows that when that good news has been shared with us, that message of hope and love has been planted, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord do so. The challenge is to accept that we are not only recipients of God's abundance, but we are partners in the production of God's abundance. 
it's all right. I mean, I, can I get it? I can't be all with you. I ain't got it. Then we don't keep it to ourselves. That we don't hold that love, that goodness, that redemption, that reconciliation, that forgiveness to ourselves. But that we too share it. And <laughs> like the sower that we are called to emulate, we don't pick and choose where we plant and share the good news. Amen. It is not our place to only go to where we anticipate high productivity, to the places that we like, the places that we're comfortable, to the, to the conditions that we presume are optimal. He said, just share it. Just give it. Just put it out there. If you've received it, share it. The entire parable, uh, both the, and the and the Old Testament reading also are are presenting to us the inevitability of the kingdom of God. That the reigning of God is coming into being. And it's up to us. Since God's harvest is in the process of coming, are we going to be a part of the program? Or not? What kind of condition? Remember, you're good. You and I, we are good soil. All of we got some rocks, maybe we got some thorns, maybe we've been trampled, but those circumstances do not prevent productivity. The, per the invitation is say yes to the grace, to say yes to the abundance, and trust it, and participate and partner with God in it. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Thank you, O Lord, for your abundant, inevitable harvest. Help us, O Lord, to invite your spirit and your power to come into our lives, to move away the rocks and the thorns and the obstacles that would prevent and hinder us from being good producers of your harvest. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Our hymn of